Thank you, Joe. Uh, I would like to just a public address announcement. There are plenty of seats in front of the room. For those of you who are standing in back of the room who would like to take a seat, uh, feel free. There are plenty of seats as you move closer to the stage. Thanks, Joe, and thank you again for everyone coming here. Over the next few minutes, what I'd like to do is give you an executive summary as to what's happening in our 125 million square foot suburban market. We'll take a look at what has taken place in 2008, but more importantly, what we're facing in 2009. Typically, as you know, it's never good to assume, but in this case, with this audience, as well as, as, well as having just heard from my partners, I'm going to assume. I'm assume that you're still here, you haven't fallen asleep, you're not too depressed, because we've all witnessed firsthand this economic recession. We have friends who have lost jobs. We know of housing that won't sell even after multiple price reductions. And we've seen our retirement accounts lose 30% of their value. The phrase, it is what it is, no longer applies. The new phrase, it is what we are going to do about it. As I touch on the following agenda, two themes continue to come to mind. One, we're in a deflationary environment and two, we are suffering from a crisis of confidence. When reflecting on 2008 and looking to explain why 2009 looks so tricky or uncertain, please keep these themes in mind. Because regardless of the statistics that you'll hear about today, we believe sometimes market psychology is more telling than any statistic. The sublease, excuse me, suburban vacancy rose to 18.2%. Statistically, 2008 was a pretty unremarkable year. Worth noting, similar to what Joe had pointed out, during the last recession, our vacancy peaked at 25 percent. Route 128 continues to be the stronger of the two ring roads in our suburban market, with the inner suburbs vacancy of 6 percent near an all-time low. The 495 market continues to deal with vacancy that is perennially in the 23 percent range. Unlike Boston and Cambridge, the suburban market had positive absorption last year to the tune of 380,000 square feet. The good news is positive is positive in this market and we'll take it. On the other hand, the reality is that with each passing quarter, 2008 was slowing down. Space availability becomes available during, for three avenues. It's new construction, it's typical vacancy, then it's also sublease space. Today, and for the near future, as you've heard from my partners, sublease space will be more of the story as companies contract and their space becomes available. In the suburban market, our average lease term is 5.4 months. And typically, the suburban market doesn't have the, the same type of long-term long large block of subleases that you can find in Boston and in Cambridge. Most often, a sublease space will be marketed as a sublease space in the suburbs, but it will ultimately end up as a direct transaction with a landlord. But, but, but again, availability is availability. Overall, asking rents did increase in 2008, believe it or not. But this is primarily due to the fact that new buildings came online and these new buildings tended to be best in class and price leaders. However, this slide is meant to demonstrate what kind of a roller coaster we've seen in rents over the past three years. Though rents are down from 2008 and heading south, you'll note in some cases that rents are still higher than where they were two years ago. A year ago, we reported 285 tenants in the market searching for 14.5 million square feet of requirements. Today, demand has fallen 25 percent to 10.7 10 million square feet of tenants in the market. Looking back for a moment, out of the 14.5 million square feet of tenants in the market, 6.2 million transacted, 4 million still remain active, but the balance has either folded or is on hold. This wheel provides a breakdown of the current demand by industry. Computer software, business services, biotech and pharma companies represent 40% of the demand. 
The remaining 60% comes from a diverse group of industries. Last year, 1.6 million square feet of new construction was delivered to the market, with 1.5 million square feet scheduled for 2009. Interestingly, the 1.6 million square feet that came online last year roughly equates to the entire inventory of what was brought on from 2003 to 2007. And secondly, this slide is meant to demonstrate the age of many of our suburban buildings, which, which are now coming close to being 30 years old. This product type is in a very precarious position. Newton showed mixed results. However, we will not be surprised if given what we know about today's tenants and the developers of these buildings that these properties will not be the first ones to be leased in this market. New construction is still the preferred way to go for many tenants in the marketplace. It's efficient floor plates, it's a sustainability, it's amenities, it's a campus-like setting. We are seeing a flight to quality. And interestingly, three of the larger deal projects currently under construction were essentially built to suits, National Grid, Biogen, and Shire. To no one's surprise, many of the future developments that we've spoken to you in the past are now on hold. Some will be scaled down, others completely reworked, and some offered for sale. Several of these projects are actually on the list to receive uh, money from the economic stimulus package currently working its way through Congress. With capital still hard to get, blanketed with weakening demand, no one in this room should be surprised that we do not believe any office buildings will be built in the near future without a significant pre-lease. Here are just a few of the big deals that took place in 2008. Two points. Eight out of the 14 have connections to the life science and healthcare industry, and five of these deals were consolidating from multiple locations to one. There were zero IPOs in Massachusetts in 2008, and as you would imagine, this is rather alarming. The frozen public markets are further exasperating the general business uncertainty and the lack of confidence. What's important to note is that VC companies are having to hold on to their portfolio companies much longer than they would have liked, oftentimes at the expense of not investing into new deals. And certainly, the daily announcement that companies are shedding employees is not good. Most feel it will get worse before it gets better. The good news can be said that layoffs are national scope and not just in Boston. The bad news, though, is it still contributes to this uncertainty in our marketplace. This past Monday, 71,000 jobs were lost. The ripple effect can be felt four ways companies continuing to prolong or delay their real estate decisions, additional space becoming available, rental rates deteriorating, and an overall sense that my company might be next. Unlike the dot-com bust, where Metro Boston and Massachusetts were worse off than national statistics, so far, Boston and Massachusetts are outperforming the national private job growth of particular interest is that Boston's even outperforming Massachusetts, the, the balance of Massachusetts. While this trend may not hold forever, and we have no certainty of that, we do think be, that Massachusetts and Boston will do better nationally because we do not have the financial services that New York and San Francisco have. have. And further, as you know, we're not dependent upon the housing industry and the construction industries as other parts of the country are. Though labels are for jars, we might sum up 2008, the year of the pause, and 2009, the year of the blink. The blink is the landlord lowering rents. The blink is the company that moves forward with a, transact, a decision to transact. The blink is the, is the bank that moves forward and provides capital. The blink is the buyer and the seller who move forward with their deal, even though there aren't enough data points to support pricing. Our forecast card is identical to that of Boston and Cambridge. Though we may be separate zip codes, the market is not that defined. We clearly are in a very challenging cycle. But the operative word, as Tom pointed out, is that it is a cycle. As you saw in the opening video, the strong will survive, the weak will retreat, 
and the herd will move forward. Staying still for us is not an option. In this market, it's not how you fall down, but it's how you pick yourself up. And with that sense, we at Collier's Marathon Group believe that we have the discipline and the focus to use best efforts and strategies to move forward successfully. We ask you to join us. I'd now like to introduce my partner, Lisa Campoli, who will give you her thoughts about the investment market. Thank you.